So my name is Mary Hyatt, and I am so honored that you are here today. Happy summer solstice. This is the longest day of the year. This is one of my favorite times of the, the year because the energy is just strong. Summer solstice historically has just been amazing for getting things done, for creating momentum and motivation in your life. And so it's a really perfect uh, kind of like sync up that today is my Facebook live show. But if this is your first time, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I am a life coach, an entrepreneur, and a presidential diamond with doTERRA. And my desire, my passion, what I am all about is to help women wake up to find their voice and to become fully alive, where you really live the life that you want, where you experience emotions, you move out of that place of being numb. And I'm super excited about our topic today. We are talking all about why I hate the word hustle and how to kind of get out of that, you know, hamster wheel thing that we've all got going on. But first, let's start the show. Welcome everybody. So I have been thinking about just how I've been working. I found myself over last week doing way too much. I was saying yes to pretty much everything. I was just giving, 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 giving out so much that I ended up at a place where I was totally burnt out, where I was completely exhausted. I had hit my absolute end. And if you guys know me, well, you know, I am not afraid of emotions. So I pretty much just melted down, was just crying and was talking to my boyfriend. And I was at this place of feeling just so exhausted and honestly lonely. I was like, man, I am just giving and giving and giving. And I realized in that moment that it wasn't anybody else's job to give back to me or to, you know, kind of show me some, some of that. It was ultimately up to me, I was not nurturing myself. I had kind of like foregone, 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 <laughs> foregone my, forgoed my uh, self-care routine. And I was in this state of kind of like manic hustle. You know, I was just like from one thing to the next, from one thing to the next. And I just completely broke down. And so my sweet boyfriend looked at me and he said, babe, he was like, the only cure for this is to rest. And I'm helping with a huge event this weekend um, for the ladies over at Hot and Healthy. It's like a body awareness, intuitive eating workshop in Nashville. And I'm helping do a bunch of stuff with that. And I thought, oh my gosh, but I got all the stuff that I need to do this weekend. And I've got a whole entire checklist of things that I need to get together for that. And I'm in between uh, executive assistants right now. And so I'm doing extra work on myself. And I thought, I don't have time to rest. Like I can't, I have way too much stuff to do. And he said, you literally can't think straight. You, you have to slow down. You know, you have to chill the frick out <laughs> and rest. And he said, your prescription is on Saturday to only rest. Your prescription on Sunday is to sleep all day, to go get a massage, to go get your nails done, to watch and binge on some Netflix. He said, that's what your job is this weekend. Now, I came up with a million reasons why I probably shouldn't do that or couldn't do that, but I knew somewhere deep inside of myself that he was right. I knew that there was something about the fact that I had to rest. And I'm an achiever by nature. I like to go. I like to do. I'm a quick start. I'm constantly doing new projects. So slowing down feels a little bit like ants crawling in my skin. It's not the most super pleasant thing for myself, but I knew he was right. And it's so interesting because stress really ultimately has become this status symbol. When, you know, when people ask you, Hey, how are you doing? Oh my God, I'm so stressed. Oh my God, I'm just so exhausted. And somehow we 
equate that with like a good pat on the back. Like, good job. The more stressed out you are, the more things that you have on your plate, the better. And there's some sort of like backwards pride that is in America that we get pleasure out of that. We think that that's a good thing. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but hustle has become the new buzzword. I cannot get through my Instagram feed or my Facebook feed without seeing that word, hustle, hustle, hustle. And I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, okay, where, why all of a sudden do we feel like we have to hustle, hustle, hustle? And I feel like we, when we approach our work, when we approach our life, the only thing that we're sort of comparing it to as a model, as an archetype, is this male way of approaching work where we work from nine to five, we get home, we're exhausted, we go straight to bed, we eat, maybe we go straight to bed. And we don't really have a lot of life outside of work. And that model, I feel like just doesn't work for women. I mean, that leaves us feeling exhausted, deprived. And to be honest, I don't even know if I have men on here, give me give me a shout out. But I don't really think that that model works for men either, where work is the only thing that you are focused on. But here's kind of the interesting thing. And tell me in the comments, type in a number one. If you are a female entrepreneur and you see this trend happening, type in a number one. Give me some hearts. Give me some likes so that I know this is going on. But the interesting thing that has happened along the way as female entrepreneurs is like we've taken this model, this like male corporate archetype and basically like upped it 50% or even 100%. And it's like, okay, we're going to go work, 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 work. And then I'm going to come home and I'm going to work even harder. And sort of like that saying, okay, I see your bet and I'm going to raise you. And we think, and we've bought into the belief that this is the only way to actually get ahead. We think that this is actually what is going to um, propel us forward. And this is ultimately like 100% masculine energy. Megan, you said, oh my gosh, if I hear the hustle one more time, totally, girl, I'm feeling yeah. But this masculine energy, um, as women, this masculine energy is like, go, 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 go. It is push, 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 push. And what happens is, is that it doesn't leave a lot of room for that feminine energy at all. Now, I believe in you, that you have to have a balance of both. I'm not like pro feminine energy, con masculine energy. I really think that you have both. I have a lot of masculine energy in me being an achiever. Uh, the number three on the Enneagram personality test, if you guys are familiar with that. But this feminine energy is, is different. It's fierce in its own way. It's not, you know, sometimes we think of feminine energy being meek or low, or um, kind of like somebody's just walking all over. No, true feminine energy is fierce, but there's this creative energy to it. There is this flow that's happening. There is this beautiful intuition that comes behind it. This, this, This sort of moon energy as opposed to masculine energy is more sun energy, hot energy, fight energy. And we obviously want to have a combination of the two, but I feel like our world right now is like only operating in the masculine and it is really exhausting us. Emily, you said that for ages, I thought I was only successful if I worked, 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 worked. Totally. And we are all in that belief. We all think that the only way to be successful if we're women, if we're building businesses, is to sort of model that masculine corporate archetype. And the reality is that it, you know, it doesn't work. Like I can attest to this because I have built several businesses. um, And the ones that I started out where I was just in a state of stress, I was in a state of hustle, I was like sacrificing self-care, I was sacrificing everything. It left me in what I call red zone, where it's like, your brain stops functioning, you're exhausted, you're burnt out, and you're so depleted and you're so deprived that it's not fun anymore. It robs you of all that joy. So hustling ultimately comes at a cost. And hustling looks like skipping your lunch. I was talking to um, a couple of female entrepreneurs the other day and there was a discussion around how 
Most people during the day, if you're a woman entrepreneur, they skip their lunch. It's like they're in the zone, they're doing their work, and they don't eat. And I'm like, oh my God, like what is wrong with this model that we're not eating, that we're literally prioritizing this hustle over eating our freaking lunch, okay? And y'all know how much I love food and you know how much I value finding pleasure <laughs> in my food. So that was disturbing. Hustling also looks like staying up till 2 a.m. when you are exhausted, but you're just working past your level of exhaustion. Hustling looks like... Um, working every single weekend, every single Saturday, every single Sunday. And I want to know for you, this is like confession time, okay? Um, type in the comments below, how is it that you hustle? When do you find yourself hustling? Where do you get caught in that hustle? What does it actually look like for you to hustle? And I know for me, my hustle looks like saying yes to everything and working beyond what I'm tired. My hustling looks like... Um, not eating breakfast and just drinking coffee. You know, what does your hustle look like? So you can begin to identify how it is that you hustle. Now, I know that there are a lot of you on this call who are like, okay, Mary, I, I know you work really hard. I see what you do. Maybe you are super successful because you've done a lot of hard work yourself. And there is a huge difference between hustle and hard work. Okay, I want to really make that distinction because what I'm not saying is, okay, just go lay on the couch and, you know, do some meditation and hopefully everything comes to you and you have this great life. No, like clearly you got to do some hard work. You got to freaking do it. And I do a lot of work, obviously, all day, every day. But here's the difference. So when you think about hustling, hustle has no boundaries. It ignores your intuition, your body intuition, your mental intuition, and it has no regard for self-care. Whereas hard work has boundaries. It's balanced and there's a piece where you're giving back to yourself. So you're doing the action, you're actually working hard, but you have boundaries. You know how to say no, when to say no. You shut off at a certain time in a day. You're not on your phone till 11 o'clock at night answering and responding to texts. That's hard work with boundaries. Hustle is, I can't shut off, I'm frantic, there's, there's not enough time, I have to do it now, I have to respond to this person now or else I'm not gonna get them to, to respond to me. And that's a big energy difference. Now, um, I know that for me, hustling always results in three things, okay? It always results in three things. Number one, it leaves you feeling burnt out. It leaves you in what I call that red zone where you have nothing left to give. You can't even quite get your brain wrapped around what you're working on. Maybe I had a client to me say the other day that she was driving to Target. It's like five minutes from her house. And she, in the middle of her drive, was like, where am I going? You know, that's burnout. That's when your brain is literally shutting down and you can't even do the simple tasks that you know how to do on autopilot. Like you are in that red zone, everything has gone gray and you don't know what's going on. I love this quote from Ariana Huffington from Huffington Post. She has written an incredible book called Thrive and she said, each of us is more likely to be a professional powerhouse if we're not asleep at the wheel. Yes, I mean seriously, like how many of us are just going through the motions because we're in that state of burnout. Now, the second thing that I know that, that, ex that hustling is going to give us is exhaustion, where we are so tired. We are sleepy. We are like jacked up on caffeine. We are adding in more cups of coffee, more Cokes, more whatever every single day because what we used to do isn't working anymore. You know, we're taking those hits of sugar just to keep ourselves like functioning in the day. And we get maybe that foggy brain in the middle of the afternoon. And you guys know I'm super into holistic health and I love essential oils, but there ain't enough essential oils or supplements that can help exhaustion when you're just like running yourself in the ground. Nothing at all can help you at that point. So Marie Asberg, the professor at an institute in Stockholm, she says the result is that we are increasingly left with only work or other stressors that often deplete our resources and nothing to replenish or nourish us. And exhaustion 
is the result. Exhaustion is the result. I mean, how like freaking crazy is that, that we only have come to a place where we value work and not rest. My, my sister Marissa, my little sister Marissa, is spending several months in Italy right now, and they have this phrase. It's called, I'm gonna butcher it because I really don't know Italian, and I don't have it written anywhere in front of me, so I'm just like doing this off of memory. It's like dulce something niente, which is basically the sweetness of doing nothing. Europeans have got it figured out. They have like a two hour block in the afternoon for a siesta. They are, you know, having happy hour at five o'clock every day. Uh, and they are just loving life because they're sitting, they're being present for it. But for us and our go, go, go hustle, we can't slow down. And so it leaves us completely exhausted. It leaves us truly at a place of deprivation. So I want to just kind of ask a question and feel free to be honest on the comment. Y'all know that this is a really safe, like loving, supportive place. You guys know I'm all about authenticity, vulnerability. But here's the question so you can answer in the comments below. If I gave myself permission to admit it, I feel deprived of. What do you feel deprived of? Maybe it's you feeling deprived of sleep. Maybe you're feeling deprived of an emotional support, time to yourself. Maybe it's just physical energy itself. Maybe it's companionship. Maybe it's intimacy. Maybe it's a deprivation of peace, of hope, even of touch. Like I know that for a lot of people, that's a, that's a big one. So really starting to ask yourself, and this is where we have to slow down to get honest with where we are at right now. Susanna, you said physical energy. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. But if you gave yourself permission to really admit it, to admit the hell out of it, you know, I feel deprived of what? And the other day when I was having my meltdown, I said to myself, I feel really lonely. Like I feel deprived of community. Like when, I hus when I'm in hustle mode, when I'm go, 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 I don't connect with people. I stop calling my friends. I stop going out to dinner with people. I stop inviting people over to my house. And I'm pretty much with myself the majority of the day. I might see my boyfriend for a couple hours a night, but pretty much the majority of the day, because I work for myself, I'm by myself. And y'all, I got really lonely, like crying tears, like I'm lonely, I miss people. <laughs> and I wouldn't even consider myself an extrovert, I'm actually an introvert. So I knew it had gotten bad. <laughs> and so I felt really lonely, and that's what I felt deprived of. I felt deprived of people, deprived of community, and that's, what hustling does. Now, the third thing that I absolutely know that hustling is going to give us uh, or was going to result in is numbing. Now, I have talked about this a lot. You guys know it's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. And side note, uh, Eva, you said, um, Eva, you said sleep and emotional support and time to yourself. Yes. Kelly, you said community for sure. Uh, Susanna, community. Yeah. So the third thing that it's going to happen when you hustle is that you're going to start to numb because everything shuts down. You start, you stop being present to your emotions and you start numbing. Now y'all know that for me, numbing in the past has been food. Okay. So for me, I'm eating when I'm not hungry. I'm not intuitively listening to my biological hu hunger signals or my fullness signals. I am either eating or drinking to numb the fact that I'm feeling super stressed out, overwhelmed. Numbing can look like binging on Netflix. Numbing can look like shopping. Numbing obviously is overworking. Anything that you do to dull the pain of the stress, to dull the pain of that feeling of being overwhelmed, that is numbing. Because if you think about it, all of those things that I just mentioned, food, alcohol, shopping, Netflix, working, none of those are inherently bad by themselves. But when we are using them as tools and mechanisms to numb where we are because the pressure is too much, that to me is a really clear signal that we are in a state of hustle. We are in a state of overdoing it. And that just does not feel good. Then you're asleep for life. And I spent, y'all, I spent so many freaking years of my life just numbed out, like asleep, to life like I would just be like I'm just sleepwalking you know through life and I didn't feel 
I didn't experience joy. It was just like freaking checked out. And that to me, when I had my wake up call was like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to live this way anymore. Like that is not fun at all. So because I'm a life coach, one of the most powerful things that I can offer you in these Facebook lives is to ask yourself powerful questions and sort of prompt you on that to start to see what's going on here when you think about our topic. You know, what's going on when you think about hustling? Why are you doing what you're doing? So I want to ask you three questions that to me are ultimately going to help you figure out what is motivating this need to hustle and begin to kind of work yourself out of it from a different place. Now, if you guys are resonating with this, if this is like, okay, yes, crap, I gotta like really take the deep dive and start looking at this, give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up, shoot me over a number two in the comment section below. So just literally type in a two, hit enter if you're like, all right, I'm ready to answer these questions. You don't have to do it publicly, okay? Um, that's also great. It's also helpful to see everybody's feedback, but are you willing to journal this out to take some time and really answer these questions for yourself so you can move out of a place of burnout, exhaustion, and numbing? So type in a number two. We got Jesse, Susanna, Kelly, Eva as a number two. You guys are awesome. Okay, so the first question that I always seem to come back to is what feeling am I after? Now this is so fascinating to me because Danielle Laporte, who is an author, she has uh, written a book called The Desire Map. She says that you're not chasing the goal itself. You're chasing the feelings that you hope attaining those goals will give you. You're, you're after the feeling itself. You don't really actually care to hit what you are gonna achieve. You are after how it's gonna make you feel. Is it gonna give you peace? Is it gonna give you joy? Is it gonna give you um, energy? Is it gonna leave you feeling excited for life or motivated or I don't know, whatever? What feeling are you really after? Because most of us, if we're kind of numbing out, we're exhausted, we're burnt out, we're sort of asleep at the wheel. And we're oftentimes working towards a goal and we're, sort of doing that on autopilot. We're not even really thinking about it. So we have to slow down to see what it is that actually is motivating us. So if any of you guys know what it is that you are after, you know, it's not about losing weight. You're after the feeling that you think losing weight is gonna give you. Maybe it's confidence. You know, maybe it is a sense of peace. Um, Jesse, you said, yes, if I were skinny, I would be happy. Yeah, exactly. Like, that is the belief, right? But you're not after really being skinny, you're after the happiness. You're after what you think the skinniness will bring you. Now that's why I'm creating an entire course on loving your body and how to make peace with the mirror to quiet that inner bully and to love your body. So that's coming out in a couple months, super excited about that because we have to challenge those voices and we have to ask ourselves, what is it that you really want? What is it that you're really, really after? And because, you know, when you, when your focus is only external, I need to make this amount of money, I need to have this amount of clients, I need to find this number of builders, I need to um, get this bonus, I need to have this amount of Instagram followers, I need to have this, you know, amount of downloads, whatever it is that you are after, or this kind of body, this kind of, you know, size in my clothing, when it's always external, what that sets you up for is a lot of anxiety, a ton of comparison, and huge amounts of stress. When it's external, because that's not really what your soul wants. Like your soul really doesn't get an, give an F <laughs> about being skinny. That's only reason you care about that is because of the external pressure, which sets you up for a really frustrating life. The only reason you want a thousand more Instagram followers is because somebody said that was better. You know, that you can only get work if you have that many followers. Your soul doesn't care. You know, your soul is after that feeling. So my question for you too is, how would you define success? How would you define success? I remember asking myself this 
question years ago. And I was sitting on the porch of my house, and I had my two dogs next to me. It was a really slow morning. And I was just sitting there, and it was a beautiful day out in Tennessee. It was a spring morning. And I'm drinking, I think I was drinking a green juice. And I asked myself that question, what does success really look like for me? What is it that I'm really after? What's the feeling that I'm looking for? And I realized in that moment that I already had it. That if I could change the way that I defined success, that success was having some free time, that success was having the ability to sit on my porch and not feel like I had to go, go, go immediately. That was success for me. Success was connecting with people. And su success too, honestly for me, um, I, I want to make a lot of money. I do, I think that's freaking awesome, you know, to be rich. I wanna do amazing, good things with my money. But the feeling that I'm after is fulfillment, for purpose, for meaning. It's not about the money itself. So what is a feeling that you are ultimately after? Now, the second question that I think is really eye-opening, and I hope that you will pause and to ask this to yourself and to answer it for yourself, is where is the pressure coming from? Because at the end of the day, you have to decide what kind of quality of life that you want. What is it that you really ultimately want? Deconstruct it from there. So when you find yourself in hustle, when you find yourself in stress, exhaustion, burnout, where is the pressure coming from? Who is creating it? Whose voice are you hearing? And I know for me, like the other day, I was feeling all this pressure about creating this course. And I'm like, I've told people that I'm you know, gonna be putting it out in July and there's no way in hell that's gonna happen. I'm traveling to Italy and I gotta you know, finish content and record and all this kind of stuff, right? And so I'm feeling all this internal pressure that's making me hustle, it's making me hustle. And I had a friend ask me, she said, listen, she said, where is that pressure coming from? And I was like, shit. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That is my own created pressure. It doesn't actually exist. And I had to ask myself, what would happen if I didn't launch that course in July? Nothing, like nobody has it on their calendar and they're just like waiting for me to just release this, you know, on a specific day. If it takes me a month longer, that's okay. Because if it sacrifices my feeling that I'm after, let's say is joy. If I'm after joy and all this pressure that I'm creating myself is costing me joy, it's not worth it. Like no amount of work is worth costing yourself joy, costing yourself peace. And sometimes that pressure can be coming from other people. Sometimes you can be allowing other people to cast their vision for your life and you sort of like sit back and you just take it. And so you start doing things based off of what the expectations of other people are on you. And that's in complete misalignment with what you really want out of your life. It's in misalignment with where you really wanna go. So you have to identify and get really clear on where your pressure is coming from. And you guys are asking me when I'm going to Italy. Uh, I'm going the last week, last two weeks in July, uh, visiting my sister. So super, super excited about that. Okay, now here's the third question. This is a more tangible question, and I think I, I like this because it helps us get out of that place. So, okay, where is your threshold? What or what is your threshold? So everyone, I say, has a uh, hustle threshold. So when you get above the line, you're like in red zone. You know, you're in complete shutdown, you're freaking out, and you are you know need to be taken into the ICU. Now here's your threshold. We wanna make sure that when we are working hard versus hustling, that we stay below that threshold where yes, we're working hard, but we have boundaries. We are able to tap into and anchor into our intuition where we can intuitively live and say, you know what, my body needs a break. My body needs to go walk. My body needs to go rest. I take naps, y'all, pretty much every day. And I'm not talking like 15 minute, cat nap, power nap, I'm talking like the lion's nap. <laughs> like, I, I don't go to bed unless I know I have like two hours. So I carve out two hours in my day to take a nap. Now, 
Does that mean I'm gonna be less productive? No, it always means I'm gonna be more productive because I'm listening to that threshold. It's like I'm bumping up against that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta come down here and how can I give myself the care, the nourishment, the nurturing that I need to keep myself below, you know, red zone. So you have to figure out what is your your threshold. So Ariana Huffington in her book Thrive, which I just love, she talks about um, creating 90 minute sprints throughout the day. That basically nobody should have to work longer than 90 minute increments because at that point our brain begins to shut down and we aren't as effective as if we sprint and relax and rest and then do another sprint. And you know what's so crazy is, so I have been working out, or as you guys know, I like to call it movement, because working out exercise is like super triggering for me, living so long in a larger body. I have really negative experiences with that. So for me, I just say, how does my body want to move today? So I have been moving my body a lot recently because it just wants it, you know, just craves that, that movement. And I have been getting into doing sprints. Now, I'm not a runner. I have no desire to be a runner. Um, and I love to go on really nice walks. And I decided that, you know, to give myself that spurt of energy, I can sprint. And I really like that. Like, I don't know, there's some, something about my personality that enjoys sprinting. So for me, I have started, my, my personal trainer has helped me to do this correctly. So here's what he says. So he goes, okay, I want you to run from here to here, and I want you to do it at 10%. So give me like 10% of your capacity. So that's like a little bit above, I mean, that's probably like walking fast. Then I come back and he says, okay, great, give me 40%. So this is like a slow jog, so I'm kind of slowly jogging. And then he'll say, okay, move it up to 70. So now I'm like, you know, not quite at my full capacity, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm cranking it. And then for two rounds, for 30 seconds, he says, all right, give me 100%. And man, y'all, I freaking book it. Like I, I go, and then after I finish those two rounds of 100%, I back it down, I back it down, I back it down, until I'm at 10% again. And there is no way in hell that I would be able to do 100% for all eight of those repetitions of sprinting. I can't, like my body cannot do it. And yet I feel like when it comes to work, that's what we expect from ourselves often. It's like, okay, I have to give myself 100% the entire day, all day, for every day, including the weekend, for the rest of the year, for the rest of my life, like that's a recipe for disaster. And that obviously is going to massively pass, pass your threshold. So you have to say, okay, how can I create these little 90 minute sprints? And it could be 30 minute sprints. It does, you know, 90 minutes is just a suggestion. But you have to decide where you are for your threshold where you can bump it up and then you rest. And then you bump it up a little bit and then you rest. And there's this sort of tempering that happens. And that's where that feminine energy comes into play. That is when we enter into flow. It's not just this straight up incline that we can't maintain. That's hustling. Working hard is whoop, whoop, whoop. Really getting at the hand motions today. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at is where's your threshold and working yourself where you're not getting to go above that threshold. So this really is a beautiful balance between hustle and flow. It's that masculine, you know, go, go, go energy of achieving to make it happen and that feminine energy where you're able to sit, where you're able to take a deep breath. And for me, like ultimately bringing beauty into something, bringing in that softness and where we sort of meet both of these energies together. And I love this quote that says, indeed, not only is there no trade-off between living a well-rounded life and high performance, performance is actually improved when our lives become more balanced. Like how beautiful is that? It's not costing us our performance. It's not costing us our efficiency. It's actually helping it. And for me, because my one of my words, one of my feelings that I'm after is joy. If I'm not feeling joy in the process, then it's totally not worth it to me because at the end of the day, the quality of life that I want to have is joy 
in my life. Like I want to experience joy. And so I encourage if you've lost the joy out of what you're doing, whether it's your uh, doTERRA business, whether it is, um, you know, your coaching practice or any kind of entrepreneurial, um, you know, thing that you're doing, if you've lost the joy in it, write out a list, like side by side, write it out, things that bring me joy, things that don't bring me joy, and go on a non-joy fast and stop doing the things that don't bring you joy for a little while. Get back to the place of joy. Get back to the place of joy and really go, okay, how can I move out of hustle and still move into a place of hard work where it's balanced, where I have boundaries ultimately? Because it's not worth it to me to sacrifice the quality of my life for an achievement. And I'm an achiever, so like that's big for me to say. I really get off on achieving things. But it's not worth it if it's costing me my health, my relationships, my, my just energy. There's more to life than that. So, you know, if you want to be with your kids, if you want to go on hikes, you know, when you kind of dissect and go, okay, what's important to me? Um, you got to make space for that in your life because I know that you guys are serious about what you're doing. You know, I know that you are 100% committed. You've made it a non-negotiable. There's no way out. You know, there's no way, you know, off the island. Um, but you can run this marathon two ways. You can run it where you go above your speed, you don't train well, you don't take your water, you don't get your salt intake, and you f end up at the finish line broken, battered, bruised, sweaty, exhausted, bloody. Or you can show up at the finish line rested, like you're still doing it, you're still running it, but you've taken the right water, you've taken your salt, you've, know, you've done the right training, and you show up at the finish line, you're like, yeah, baby, you know, and you've like flashed that big smile and you can celebrate, you can enjoy it, you can participate because you were present. You saw the people along the way as you were running. You stopped to go to the bathroom. You stopped to take the drink, you know, like you were present for the journey. You heard the bands playing. There's two ways, push, 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 or enjoy, enjoy the journey. Obviously, I want to enjoy the journey for my entire life and we have to slow down to rest to check in with ourselves to drink water to eat our freaking lunch to sit down to take a nap to take a break and so my encouragement to you is when you see these words hustle and you get that internal or external pressure on yourself pause and ask yourself what is it that i really want to feel where is this pressure coming from and Ultimately, what do I need to do to make sure that I'm not getting above my threshold? And enjoy the journey, enjoy the run as you are going. And this is something that has been a process for me as I've been going. I have had to learn this over and over again because my tendency is to run myself into the ground and then I play catch up, then I have to be in that recovery stage. And I am at the point where I'm like, this does not work anymore because I'm costing myself so much. And so I'm just saying publicly that I get it, that I'm there in that hustle and I buy into that crazy, you know, propaganda that's going on out there. And I'm like, okay, enough, enough. If I see somebody saying hustle, like I just go, nope, that's not for me. I'm not going to take that on for myself. I don't have to latch on to that word hustle and I can swap it for hard work. So I, I encourage you to begin to do that, to identify how you're hustling, why you're hustling, and beginning and begin to shift those patterns. Now, before we tune out, I do want to share with you my brand new free download, Love Your Body Affirmation Cheat Sheet, because you cannot hate your way to loving your body. And so we have to begin to change that dialogue. So I just got this up. I'm super excited. It's a free uh, four page PDF download comes straight to your email inbox. The link is at the top of this page and you can immediately download that. But I will walk you through step by step exactly what are affirmations, how you have to think about your body a little bit differently when you're creating affirmations to love your body and then eventually how to step-by-step -step create them and supercharge them so that you can begin to make more peace with the mirror. 
So guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Happy, happy solstice. I'm grateful to each one of you. And as I always say, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great and to be full. Thank you guys so much. I'll see y'all next week with a very special guest. My first coach that I ever had, Amber Chris, will be on the show with us. She is a wealth of knowledge. You do not want to miss her. So mark it in your calendars next Wednesday, 1 o'clock Central with my special guest, coach, life coach, Amber Chris. All right, I'll see you guys there. Bye.